Okay, welcome to Architects of Change Live, conversations with change makers who are moving humanity forward, and certainly that is a very good description of the woman sitting next to me. Susie Amos Cameron is a friend, but I wanted her to come here, not because she's a friend, but because of what she's doing in the world. She is uh, an incredible advocate, an incredible activist, changing the way we eat, changing the way kids learn, changing the way we look at our food, uh, in addition to being a wife, a mom, um, and an actress. But we're here today to talk about her new book. It's called OMD, Change the World by Changing One Meal a Day, the simple plant-based program to save your health, save your waistline, and save the planet. That's a lot of saving. <laughs> well, we gotta do a lot of saving. I'm so glad uh, that you're here, and I'm so proud of you. Uh, mm. For writing this book, we were. I went to her book party opening, and it's a huge, as anybody know, achievement to write a book. A lot goes into writing a book, and this there's a lot in this book. So tell me, Susie, why you wanted to put this in book form? Um, I think mainly because it's not really out there, mm -hmm. and how it all started was Jim and I went plant based six and a half years ago. I remember this well. Yes, exactly, right. because we ended up like trying to convert everybody else exactly the way we had done it, which was totally cold turkey. Right. Um, and quickly learned that that wasn't really the best approach for the majority of people. A small percentage will just like you know, clean out their kitchen and We'll talk about how you, that. you went cold mm. turkey first. So before, because so. a lot of people, the idea <coughs> of converting to the traditional, going from the traditional American diet to a plant-based diet right. seems impossible. Right. It is daunting, and, and it's, it can be really, really hard. Um, but we watched Forks Over Knives. I watched it first. Right. And, you know, both of us have heart disease and cancer and diabetes in our families. And doctors were starting to tell Jim that he needed to, you know, take heart medication prophylactically. I mean, he didn't, he didn't even have anything major going on. And I just kept saying to him, you know, no, the side effects are horrible and there's got to be another way. And he said, look, babe, it's genetic. You know, it just happens. You end up taking medication and then, you know, then you get sick and then you die. Right. It's just part of life. And I just said, I just knew that there had to be another another way and a friend of mine told me about forks over knives mm -hmm. I watched it I grabbed it took it down to the gym one day and um, 10 minutes into it I just had to get off the treadmill I just thought I we've been lied to our whole lives advertised to our, our whole lives yeah. about the fact that we need animal products for strong muscles mm -hmm. and we need dairy for dairy, strong bones right, right. and it's actually the antithesis of that it's really bad for your health and um, anyway so I was completely fired up I went to find Jim upstairs at the house and I just said you know babe I need an hour and a half of your time tomorrow and he said oh well why and I said well, we're gonna watch a movie and he said oh cool I love movies yeah <laughs> what are we gonna watch and I just her husband is Jim Cameron who's a very famous director so he does he makes movies and he loves them and yeah. yes yeah, that's right so um, anyway I just said I'm not gonna tell you what it is I just want to sit and watch it and then we can talk about it afterwards and we sat and watched it and from the time that we were you know from the TV room into the kitchen he said we shouldn't have any more animal products so I was just, uh, you know, so happy that he, it had affected him the same way it affected me. And it was not long after that that he started educating me on environmental issues. Right. Now, I had been working with the largest environmental NGO in the United States. No one had ever said a word, a peep, about animal agriculture and how devastating it is on the environment. So I, I think that what you're saying, which is, I think, really here, this is not... We talk a lot here about uh, food and Alzheimer's and the brain, yep. and but really, and also Mediterranean diets, plant-based, vegan, keto, all of intermittent fasting, a lot of that sort of stuff. Sure. But what Susie's really saying here is also talking about plant-based, and I like that you're saying change just one meal a day, right. which is a good way to start, but that changing one meal and its impact 
on climate. It's so people don't get that at all. Right, and it's huge. Well, explain and it. I think that I think that's the biggest piece of it is that I used to come home from these meetings at the the um, NGO and just feel devastated. Or I'd watch a documentary, when, you know, Inconvenient Truth or something like that. Because you feel like it would, couldn't do anything. There's nothing you can really do. And I realize that Jim and I have an amazing platform. Mm -hmm. I can start environmental schools and have, you know, dress design she has. Dress design contests and, you know, things and drive an electric car. We have solar up at the ranch where you've been. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just never felt like that was, uh, and it wasn't. It wasn't really even scratching the surface. So, you know, people that don't have that kind of platform or those kinds of means are, you know, of course they're going to feel like they can't do anything. So what ended up happening is when we, when I started learning about all the environmental stuff, um, I started the school with my sister, mm -hmm. Rebecca Amos, Yes. and about a year into us being plant-based, we sort of looked at each other and said, we can't serve animal products at the school anymore because it's an environmental school, and we can't call ourselves an environmental school and still be serving animal products. Mm -hmm. So we took 18 months, and we brought in doctors. I mean, Dean Ornish was one of them. Right. I know that you recently talked to him. Um, but we had doctors, we had athletes, we had chefs, we had climate scientists and authors and people that came in and spent the day with the children and then they spent the evening with the grown-ups educating them about it and what we found out was that one person changing one plant-based meal a day for a year saves 200,000 gallons of water and the carbon equivalent of driving from Los Angeles to New York. So pause a second there because that's a big yeah. thing you just said. Yeah. Repeat it slowly so anybody who's listening, you're not saying you're going to have to eat plant for the rest of your life. What you're really saying is change one meal exactly. a day. Right. So we learned this at school. And, what, what, and changing one meal yeah. a day will change what? So changing one meal a day, one person, right. for a year, will save 200,000 gallons of water and the carbon equivalent of driving from Los Angeles to New York. And animal agriculture is the second leading cause of greenhouse gases and climate change, more than all transportation combined. So you can actually make more of a difference by what you're putting on your plate than by what you're driving. Towards your climate. Yeah. So yeah. kind of connecting people to what they're eating, not just being good for your heart or your waistline, but to the air we are breathing. Oh, you're, the air, the water, the land, everything. So, it, and it ultimately, I mean, that's my big message is around the environment because, you know, the IPCC report that the United yes. Nations put out, you know, we have till 2030 to really turn things around. So that's my drive behind all of it. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter why you do it. You can do it for your health. You can do it for your waistline, you can do it for the environment, you can do it for the animals, you can do it for your sex life. It doesn't matter. What, do, what does it do for your sex life? Well, if you're clogging up your arteries up here and you mm -hmm. don't have good blood flow up here, you're not going to have it down there. So if that, if you haven't <laughs> been able to, if that might get you interested if the climate didn't. But so w I went to the opening uh, when you kind of started with your book and you've been out on tour talking mm -hmm. about this message of really telling people that it's in within their power to change the world by simply changing one meal a day. And what you write in here is like, if you normally have a hamburger, choose a veggie burger. If you normally eat chicken with your salad, just eat your salad or get, what did you say, impossible burger or beyond burger or what, yeah. tofu or whatever. Or soy milk on your cereal instead of cow's milk or. So just one change, you yeah. don't have to go, as you said, cold turkey, but one of these things actually makes you a change maker. Absolutely. And Absolutely. so when you go out on the road now, since you've been out, what are you hearing from people? Are they shocked by this? Interested? Do they feel empowered? Do they not want it? What is The it? reception has been unbelievable. And I think it comes from the fact that when Jim and I first started going out and talking to people about it, I mean, we got like major pushback. Mm -hmm. When we took the this, this school, um, vegan, plant-based, we lost 50% of our kids. 
So wow. we've now- Wow, parents were like, I don't want my kid oh. here. No, they were, they, it was mutiny. It was full on mutiny. I mean, I think that they thought we wanted them to go completely plant-based all the time. And our head of school, uh, Jeff King, got very frustrated one day and he said, people, you can give them eggs and bacon in the morning and you can give them a burger at night. It's one meal a day. It's OMD. I see. So that's where OMD started. But going around the world, it's been fascinating because, you know, the book is actually a guide. Right. It's got recipes, meal plans, and it will tell you how to do one meal a day or two or blow up your kitchen like Jim and I did. So I really, you know, I hold your hand and walk you through it. And that has been an opening door for people that that you don't have to be perfect. You know, you don't have to be dogmatic about it and it's non-judgmental. You can just try one meal a day. How have you changed your messaging around this from when you first went? You were saying in the beginning you were kind of like really like aggressive about it. Are you <laughs> are you inviting people in in a different way? Absolutely. I mean, this actually is an invitation yeah. because before it was just like, no, just do it. It's yeah. great. Just clean out your kitchen. You know, tw- just try it in 21 days and you're going to feel so much better. And I mean, Jim and I were constantly up on our soapbox. People would see us coming and they would turn around and walk away. That's interesting. Yeah. So now it's just, it's more, it's more open and people are, they're really curious about it. You know, it's like, well, you know, where do I get almond milk or, you know, they're just curious. And the other thing that I have found, which is fascinating is, you know, because I've been to, I just came back from New Zealand and Australia, and then I've been all over the United States. I was in, you know, Oklahoma, where it's big meat and potatoes, yeah, where say, I grew up. Yeah, I was going to ask you about yeah. that. How does that message go when you go into, you know, states where people make their living yeah. on this? Well, New Zealand was, I had to be, I had to be very careful, yeah. um, because their their whole livelihood is based on um, dairy and meat, uh-huh. uh, but they are very, very well aware that they can't meet their their Paris Accord numbers and still be having the amount of animal agriculture that they have. Mm-hmm. So they're starting to get hip to it. So when you go to Oklahoma with this message, what's it's the just, reaction? There's always someone. There's always somebody that comes out of the woodwork that says, "Oh yeah, my my brother went." plant-based because he had health issues or, you know, my, I've had people come up to me to say, my daughter is 12 years old and she doesn't want to have any meat or dairy at all. And I'm really worried about her health, you know, and I'm like, don't worry, it's much better for her and it'll help her, you know, with her hormones. And as she, as she gets older, it'll help Mm -hmm. her with her, you know, osteoporosis risk or you know Alzheimer's risk all of those things so how has your own health so you talked about kind of maybe softening the way you approach people to get mm-hmm. them in t- into this right yeah uh, I remember when you guys first went uh, plant-based and the Christmas present came in it was forks <laughs> and knives and books and all this stuff and I was like oh my god but you've really been kind of at the forefront and when you talk about I just want to be clear when you talk about plant-based are you talking vegan or just because people use it two different ways that some people say I'm a vegan others say I eat plant-based right so, right you know it's it's vegan for a long time sort of had a lot of baggage along with it right um, I still wear leather. I don't go out and buy leather, but mm-hmm. I have, you know, I have leather shoes that I've had for 20 years. I'm not going to donate them and let somebody else wear them. Right. I will continue to use them until they wear out kind of mm-hmm. thing. Um, we have, we produce honey on our farms, but the way we do it, I mean, it's very ethically harvested honey and we, we multiply our hives by two every year and we sell them to farmers because we need bees in order to have vegetables. Right. Um, so there are a lot of things about being vegan um, that is that is very dogmatic. I think right. it's less so now. I mean, when you go right. in stores and you see they're using, you know, plant-based and marketing and vegan as marketing now, right. which is amazing. But you didn't say vegan-based. No, we like to say whole food plant-based. Yeah. And so what is, so somebody's sitting there and let's just say they like steak, they like chicken. Um, They're saying, you know, there's just no way. 
it's just one meal. It's just changing one meal a day. And like you said, it's like it's putting soy milk on your cereal or almond milk on your cereal instead of cow's milk. It's about having a, you know, a beautiful grilled veggie and bean burrito instead of a beef burrito or having tomato sauce on your pasta instead of meat sauce. Or you can get these, you know, um, beef crumbles, plant-based mm -hmm. beef crumbles, and put them on there as well. What and difference have you seen this make in the kids at your school that you started, in your own life, in the life of people that have come up and said, I've switched? I don't know. I have so many testimonials of people that have, you know, said, I lost 60 pounds and I got off all my medication. I mean, you know, Jim lost a lot of weight. Yeah. And um, we haven't had a cold or a flu or anything in six and a half years. Mm. Yeah, and we're around people all the time. I'm you haven't been sick no. once in six and a half, and you attribute that to a plant-based diet. I don't know what else it would be, because before that, I mean, Jim would get, you know, two or three colds a year, and he'd get the flu, and, you know, and I would get colds, and I mean, you know, when I'm around children all the time, they're the right. perfect viri vectors, <laughs> Right. you know? What do you think this is, you know, your mission is, is to get this out to as many people as possible? Do you feel like you're in a hurry? You have a sense of urgency about yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Wh where is that um, coming from? Well, what is that? You know, I mean, you know Jim. So he's a doomsday kind of guy, Yeah. right? I mean, you look at his movies, and it's all about, you know, death and destruction, end of the world, and everybody's going to... They're really smart <laughs> and really fun and creative. Yes, yes. yes, of course Yes, are. yes, course yes. No, I know, yes. But he doesn't use the word hope. He has a T-shirt that says, hope is not a strategy. And where's it? Uh -huh. And we were walking on the beach maybe a month after we went uh -oh. plant-based. Hope is not a strategy, because I talk about that with when I'm talking about women and Alzheimer's. I'm like, we're cultivators of hope. We believe we have to have hope. I believe in hope. We <laughs> believe in hope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're walking on the beach, and he turns to me, and he said, you know, babe, for the first time in my life, I have hope. And I almost fell into the surf. I was like, what? And he said, the more people that we can inspire to go plant-based, the more we're going to be able to move the needle on climate change. Wow. And it was in that moment that, you know, I mean, I, I've always had a strong fire to make a difference and do things, but it was in that moment, I mean, this, it turned into a raging inferno, you know. So I knew I was going to be writing a book. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the just propagating it out into the world is... It is my mission now. It is my life purpose. And we're making, um, we have a, a protein plant. We're making um, plant proteins up in Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. So we're turning those into OMD food products that will launch in January. Oh, wow. I know. It's really cool. And we've got, so we're creating things like pulled pork and ginger beef and cheese sauces and snacks and Where all that kinds come? of things. You said you've always had a desire to make a difference. Uh, and people, you know, spend, I, I hear all the time, people are like, you know, I want to have a purpose. I want to have a passion. I just can't kind of get my hand on it. I don't know. And y you weren't always this person here advocating for this or no. thinking that, so I just want to say to people who are like, oh my God, I'm, you know, 25, I'm 35. I don't have my passion or my purpose. You came to this. Uh, in a kind of backward way, really, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. in an unexpected way, right? By watching a film and then kind of plodding along, learning, right, trying right. different things. And then was there a moment where you realized, this is my mission, this is my purpose? I, absolutely. When I knew that it could actually make a difference in our environment, and I, you know, I just, I, well, you heard me speak yeah. at the book launch, yeah. and I just, I get so worried about the children that are going to grow up on our planet. Mm -hmm. So that's what wakes me up every day. That's what blows my skirt up and makes me want to get up and do as much as I possibly can to make the world a better place for all of our children to grow up in. But it started, it really, really started back when I was in, in Oklahoma and, you know, then I became a model. Right. And, you know, it was, it's so confusing when you hear about, and you were talking about, you know, different ways of 
Right, right. You know, it's right. so confusing to know what's healthy and what's not healthy. Right, and exactly. And how, you know, and especially being a model and then going and being an actress and, you know, you've got to stay a certain size and you've got to, you know, look good for the cameras and fit into the clothes and, you know, all of right, those right. silly things. Yeah. Pressure. It is. It's, it's a, a livelihood, too. It is. So, a, yeah. And, and, you know, women have a lot of pressure. Yeah in society. Right. And I, I mentioned this to Jim uh, not too long ago. I said, you know, I, I mean, I struggled certainly with, you know, okay, you eat, you're supposed to eat a lot of yogurt. That's going to help. Or you're supposed to just eat a lot of protein. Oh, that's going to help. You know, animal protein. Yeah, right. And um, it wasn't until I went plant-based that I realized I had finally learned how to nourish myself and my body to be healthy and happy and we probably eat twice or three times as much as we ever ate before <laughs> which is so, interesting but so but what you did is you you started this with your health and then connected yeah. it to the health of children then connected it to the health of our planet right Right. right and right. and connecting the dots as you moved forward right? right and then being able to put it all kind of in a book which is a roadmap really for all of us and um, about how to incrementally get make our way to perhaps where you are mm -hmm. right yeah. you know that uh, for those people who can go quickly that's awesome uh, but for people what I like about this is that it's one meal one meal a day, challenge yourself in the new year, which is why I wanted to do this now, because everybody's always thinking about, you know, how to lose weight, how to do this in the new year, beating right. ourselves up for everything. But the idea that changing your personal habit mm -hmm. in the new year can have a dramatic impact on our planet and therefore on our children yeah. is an incredible New Year's challenge to oneself. Right. It absolutely is. And what what I'm finding is that people will, they'll change one meal mm -hmm. and then they won't have that yeah. mid-morning dip or that afternoon dip or they'll sleep better and not have acid reflux and or not snore or something and they'll end up doing two. Yeah. I mean, my brother. Shh, don't tell anybody. I'm just doing one. <laughs> no, okay. well, my, you'll do three and then I'll have you. <laughs> my brother in Oklahoma who is, there's nobody more carnivorous than him. Right. And he is now doing two meals a day which is unheard of to do that and I saw yeah. your mother and what will this do to women what you know because so many women are struggling with depression so many women struggle with autoimmune disease we're always looking talking here about women and their cognitive health and women right. and Alzheimer's and so many things seem to disproportionately impact women uh, have you heard from women who might have felt stressed, depressed, anxious, and any effect on this on them? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's kind of like this silver bullet um, because they're, you know, people have gone on a plant-based diet right. to help with their depression and their anxiety. You know, there's research out there, a lot of research out there, and I talk a little bit about it in here, about osteoporosis. The countries that have the most um, consumption of dairy products have the highest incidence of osteoporosis and wow. cancer and heart disease and, and diabetes. There's also research that they're doing now around Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and plant-based eating, right. which is really interesting. Yeah. yeah, so I think we always, uh, we talk here a lot about it and everything, obviously check with your doctor. Uh, you know, Susie has Dean Ornish, who was on here not too long ago about his book. He wrote the foreword here. Uh, so, you know, we're, every time I always say, like, check with your doctor because you have all sorts of, everybody's personal. But I think that we now know from when you started talking about this, when I remember you first talking about going uh, vegan, it is much more accepted, particularly maybe on the coast. But it's mm -hmm. now when you travel through the Midwest, when you travel in the South, you're seeing people saying, there's got to be a better way yeah. for me to eat, for me to live, for the way our kids remember in school, right. hyperactivity, focus, learning. Yep. Have yep. you seen results in the school? Oh, absolutely. What, is, what do yeah. you see I mean, the plant-based diet in the school? I think the, the, the probably the most fun thing that happens is you know, at the beginning of the school year, we get, you know, on influx of new children. Yeah. And the parents sort of drop them off and say, you know, 
he doesn't eat anything green, good luck. And within weeks or a month, you know, they're, because they, we have 150 raised beds. So the children are actually growing about, depending on the, what time of year it is, 60 to 90% of the produce that they're eating every day. So they plant it, they grow it, they harvest it, they learn how to prepare it, and they compost it. And then what's happening wow. is they go home and they go and infect their parents, you know, and their aunties and uncles and, and yeah. grandmas and grandpas and things like that. And we have so many calls that are like, I, you know, I need recipes. How do I do this? My child wants to compost now. They want to grow things. And there are two very funny stories actually in here. One of them was um, a little boy who was at a grocery store with his mom and you know yeah. you take a child to the grocery yes. store inevitably you come out <laughs> with things like you never even heard of or planned on right, right? or yeah. you have a big tantrum right, right. Yes. so this little kid was there and just started stomping around and said you promised me tofu oh my god that I have to say has never happened to me. <laughs> no, yeah. but these are the kinds of stories that are that are coming out of the kids. Or, or there's another little kid that wanted only radishes for dinner one night, and he was four years old. I think it's right because I think about when our kids were little. None of this was out there right. in the zeitgeist, and so all of this has taken hold really in the last. I mean, you could say obviously people have been vegetarian forever. I know that, but kind of linking it to disease the astronomical amount of disease in our country, linking it to prevention, and now linking it to climate change, which people have become much more right. aware of our own personal um, role mm -hmm. in climate change. Yeah. And, and so that this idea, which, which is great, what she did is she really connects it to, um, you know, the, I love this little thing, you know, slows climate change, puts plant-based diet in the middle, you know, fresh, safe water, clean oceans, protect biodiversity, replant flora, slow climate change, all with that one change that you make here. So this is not your basic uh, cookbook. It's not your basic food book. It's not your basic environmental book or activist book. It's kind of all of that. It's kind one. of it's kind of one stop shopping. Yeah, I mean, it starts with great. health, and yeah. I worked with a team of our brain trust of doctors. Right. So it's heavily researched, and then for the environmental stuff, we worked with Oxford University and Chatham House and Loma Linda, just to make sure that we really had the the correct science behind us. So it's That's great. it gives you all of that education information, mm -hmm. and then it's a how to guide. And also a how-to guide on like what to put your food in. I get schooled on this all the time from my kids right. about you know glass containers. Right. That all of these little things. What I like to mention that is because it does make you feel like you're making a little bit of a difference, mm -hmm. or you're making a little bit of a change, uh, and trying to make the world a little bit better in our own way. So she has the pantry list. She has the shopping list. She has everything about, you know. God, everything is in here from recipes to the research, as she says, to a menu plan to uh, taking things like that are your favorites and switching them up so people don't even know. And, um, you know, it's, it's an incredible achievement of work. Mm. And it's years yeah. in the making. Yeah. It's Definitely. years in the making. Definitely. So uh, the book is OMD Change the World by Changing One Meal a Day. The author is Susie Amos Cameron. The foreword is by Dean Ornish, who many of you know. And I like this uh, blurb up here. It's incremental, non-judgmental, and nutrition-based approach. And it's the exact kind of thing. You can give it for Christmas. You can embark on it in the new year. I'm going to try to do one meal a day, too. Yay! Yay! And then I'll have to report back here. You'll have uh, to hold me accountable next year. But congratulations, thank Susie. Thank you. And thank you for coming yeah. on a definite change maker. Yeah. Have a great day. Thank you.